Sunday for radio with your host, Gen T. Yeah, fucking Jen is a warlord. Uh... What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ramble Pro Radio. I am your host, Gen T. Twitter and Instagram at Gen T523. What's going on, motherfuckers? <laughs> I shat the bed last week on UFC picks. I went three for nine. How about a complete abomination of picks? I figured out that if whenever I pick somebody and most of my picks are favorites, I will emergency switch my picks on the IG. So be on the lookout. This has happened two times before where my picks all turn out to be favorites, you immediately bet underdogs. Because <laughs> then we would have went, oh, instead of three out of nine, we would have went, oh, shit, we would have went nine for three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry about that, guys. But the most important bets, one, were at Bellator or a hit Nemkov over Bader. Woo! It was so magnificent to see that they had a camera on Ryan Bader's family while watching the fights with no masks on, crowded together, <laughs> thinking Bader was going to win, and he lost! That was a victory in itself. And even though I shit the bed on my UFC picks, I could have cared less. I was so happy that Nemkov won because, you know, Nemkov trains at Fader's gym and, and Bader beat Fader. So Fader is my favorite fighter. So it was bittersweet revenge. Better luck next time. Slug it. <laughs> but enough of that. We've got UFC fights tomorrow. And I'm so fucking excited. I'm so excited. Here we go, but before we get into it, you know what time it is. If you don't like UFC, if you don't like fights, fast forward 10 minutes ahead, because we're getting into it right now. That is a parade, I need to be it now, so so I think I like he won't have a bet to me. I got the thought I'll do myself. So I very go with the bad man. Blinds at me. <laughs> it's time, y'all, for some UFC. It is Smith Rackick this weekend in Vegas. And here are my picks as follows. First off, Mallory Martin, Tiger Thai Muay Thai versus Hannah Clifers. Mallory, 6-3, 2 KOs, 1 sub, 3 decisions. Hannah Clivers, 5 KOs, 5 decisions. Hmm. Interesting little do-ditty there. Normally, if I see somebody with 5 KOs, 5 decisions, I immediately switch on over to their side because, you know, they're telling me they want to finish with, I want to finish with 5 KOs. But then... The decisions are high. I don't like the decisions. You understand? I'm not a fan. Um, so I'm going to go with Mallory. I feel like she's a young pup on the scene. Six and three. Tiger Thai Muay Thai. She should be aggressive and want to go for a finish here. Even though it's two KOs, one sub. New to the game. So I'm going to give her a shot. I'm going with Mallory Martin. Next, I've got Emily. Whitmore versus Pollyanna Viana. 
Emily, four and three, one sub, three decisions. Pollyanna, ten and four, four, four KOs, six subs. We're going with Brazil. Pollyanna, Diana. Next, my favorite. Y'all know my motherfucking favorite right here. If I want to be with me. That's right. Christine, <laughs> Christian Aguilera. I'm a dream um, we riding with Christian Aguilera, a.k.a. A- a- X- X-Tina. <laughs> 14 and 6, 11 KOs, 3 decisions. He has his toughest fight to date. Sean Brady, 12 and 0, 3 KOs, 2 subs, 7 decisions. Woo, fuck. Henzo Gracie, Philly. He's a Philly cheesecake guy. Philly. <laughs> I'm riding with Christian Aguilera, okay? But I'm blinded, so, you know, make your own decision on that. I'm going, I'm, I just, Christian had the most vicious knockout last time he fought, and I told y'all, he would rub the genie the right way and get it done, so I feel like he could do it again. Next, Bruce Leroy. Alex Caceres versus Austin Springer. Alex, 16 and 2, 3 KOs, 5 subs, 8 decisions. <laughs> Austin Springer, 12 and 2, 7 KOs, 2 subs, 3 decisions. Hmm. I think I have to ride with Bruce Leroy. He is a Miami boy, 305, 305 till I die. I feel like he's a scrapper, and so. We just have to ride with Alex on this one. Austin, maybe you win, maybe you won't. Um, I'm riding with Bruce Leroy. Next, Zach Cummings versus Alessio Di Chirigier. Oh, whoa, what the fuck? Let me do it right. Alessio Di Chirico. Di Chirico. Zach Cummings versus Alessio Di Chirico. It's 23 and 7, 5 KOs, 12 subs, 6 decisions. Versus Alessio, 12 and 4, 5 KOs, 4 subs, 3 decisions. I'm going to go with Zach Cummings. He let me down last time, but I think he gets this job done. Next, Mackie Coconut Bombs Pitolo. He's going to bring the thunder to Impa Casignage. Wow, holy shit. Casignage. Whoa. Uh, Impa. That sounds like Martin Simpa. They eat the poo like ice cream. <laughs> no leaking. Where they, a, a man's anus is leaked like this by the other person. Like ice cream. Like ice cream. And then what happens? Even poo comes out. The other poo is out. Huh? And then they eat the poo Decisions. Mm. Maki Coconut Bombs, 13 and 6, 7 KOs, 3 subs, 3 decisions. Man, man, a lot of people are counting Maki out on this one because they feel like he's aggressive based on his last loss to Darren Stewart. And so Impa, Pasta Impa, will be calm and collected and take him to the ground and submit him. I'm going to ride with Mackie only because he's trying to finish the fight. So seven KOs and three subs tell me he's trying to finish the fucking fight. Next, we've got Magamon Angalev versus Ian Iwan Kadalaba. 13 and 1, Magamon, 8 and 8 KOs, 5 decisions. Dagestani, keyword, Dagestani. Uh, he should get this done like he won last time. Uh, they fought last time. He won. Apparently, uh, Iwan was very upset about the stoppage, so they're running it back, if you will, and he will lose again. Iwan, 15 and 5, 12 KOs, two subs. Yeah. I like Iwan, but I'm going to have to ride with Megamud and Gliv. Dagestan. Dagestan takes number one president in the Rembro Peaks. Next, Ricardo Lamas, 19 and 8, 6 KOs, 5 subs, 8 decisions versus Bill El, El Gio, 13 and 4, 3 KOs, 6 subs, 4 decisions. I like Ricardo Lamas 
but I feel like it might be time. It might be time to say goodbye. I don't like Bill. Bill is a newcomer, and I don't feel like he's truly been tested yet. So this will be his his chance to see if he can hang with the big boys or will Ricardo Lamas shut him down. I feel like Ricardo Lamas will get this done. This originally was actually supposed to be Ryan Hall, Ricardo Lamas, but Ryan Hall got hurt. Yes, son of a bitch. I wanted to see that fight. Next, Alexa Grasso versus Ji Young Kim. Alexa, 11 and 3, 4 KOs, 7 decisions. Ji Young Kim, 9 2, 2, and 2 KOs, 3 subs, 4 decisions. I'm riding with Alexa Grasso. I feel like she got robbed uh, uh, with that Carla Esparza fight. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go with uh, Grasso on this. Next, Robbie Lawler versus Neil Magny. Robbie Lawler, 28 and 14, 20 KOs, 1 sub, 7 decisions. Neil Magny, 23 and 7, 7 KOs, 3 subs, 13 decisions. Oh, God. That's terrible. I don't like that. Um, Neil Magny is going to pick his shots from the outside, while Robbie will be desperately swinging from the inside. I just am trying to visualize Robbie somehow getting in tight and knocking Neil out. But at 38 years old, I just don't think he's got the speed to keep up with the picking of the shots from the outside from Neil Magny. So I'm riding with Neil Magny. Okay. Next, Anthony Smith, 33-15, 18 KOs, 12 subs, 2 decisions versus Alexander Rakic, 12 and 2, 9 KOs, uh, two, two, 2 subs? No. Nah. Anyway. Rakic is ATT, and ATT is the code word. Dagestan and ATT is the code word. We're going with Rakic. Anthony Smith could not beat. Glover Teixeira could not beat a burglar in his own home. Did you see what Rakic did to Manoa? My God, he nearly killed the man with a head kick. Anthony Smith is going to be in serious trouble. Um, I want to believe in Lionheart. I was sold on Lionheart, but his two losses just show me where his weaknesses are, and he fades so easily. It's crazy. Um, I'm riding with Ratic. Okay, those are my UFC picks. Here we go one more time for the rundown. We're riding with Mallory Martin, Pollyanna Viana, Christine Aguilera. Alex Caceres, a.k.a. Bruce Leroy. Zach Cummings, Mackie Coconut Bombs, Pitolo. Magamad Anklev, Ricardo Lamas, Alexa Grasso, Neil Magny, and Alexander Ratchet. Those are your UFC picks. Bet with me, bet against me. Who gives a flying fuck? Let's have fun. Let's watch fucking fights. It's time for Customer of the Week. This week, I had to help another ungrateful at my job. And, you know, work is the usual strange, bizarre, weird place where we have moments of greatness and then complete failures. (laughs) Um, Case in point, I was walking around with headphones this week. And, of course, you know what it means when you walk around with headphones. That means, do not, do not disturb. I'm on break. I'm on my time. So the fact that one of my bosses went to DEF CON 5 and went to around to other people to ask why I was wearing headphones on walking around the store with headphones. Two people had to explain to him, she's on a break. Immediately back down, which, fine, but the, you have to ask yourself, if you're in DEF CON 5, 24-7, you're in such a state of alertness, just waiting to pick somebody apart, to find something they're doing wrong, punish them, you're just waiting to punish somebody, 
I can't understand the logic behind that because if you see somebody with headphones on, that means that they're on their time, that they are indeed not on company time. So if there was some sort of reasoning, instead of being in this heightened state of paranoia all the time, that they would have realized that I'm not breaking any rules. I'm on my time and uh, I am allowed to do what I want to do on my time. And my time should be respected. And I found it to be completely fascinating when this individual came up to me and was like, I just want to let you know that I thought you were breaking the rules. But uh, someone brought to my attention that you were not breaking the rules and we're cool now. I was like, the fuck, bitch? We're what? We're cool now? We're what? Um... (laughs) We're cool now? Oh my god, opposed to what, fam? Like, honestly, what were, what were we about to not be? Because <laughs> I'd love to know what the fuck you were going to tell me about me wearing headphones on my break. I'm wearing headphones so people, I'm wearing headphones so people who shop at my work stop asking me stupid questions on my time. That is fair. People don't get the point when you got a shopping cart and you're pushing a shopping cart. You got your phone out and they still ask you a fucking question. I'm fucking shopping. Leave me the fuck alone. So I put headphones on. No big deal. Apparently it is. (laughs) I just was beside myself. And then before I left at the end of the night... I got the same thing. I just want to let you know that we're cool. I thought you were breaking the rules, but we're cool now. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Like, say whatever you got to say to make yourself feel good for being wrong. You were in the wrong, sir. This is just crazy. It's like a bizarre Gestapo state. This individual, years before, they were not my boss. And was super cool, still is cool personally, still is cool, but once got the the black shirt, if you will, the management position or keys, if they call it, immensely became drowned, drunk with power, and it is almost to a point where it's not even human, it's like robotic, it's like, brother, you got to take a step back and breathe, stop for a minute, okay, breathe and stop. For real? <laughs> Breathe and stop for real and give it what you got. And just- A lot going on. I know you're under pressure to do good things. But remember, um, people make mistakes. Things happen. But certainly in my 17, 18 years of been working there now, I have never thought it would be okay to be on the clock and put headphones on. Come on, man. Where is your sense of reasoning? This is crazy. This is the place that I'm working. Where I've got to keep my head on the swivel 24-7 because somebody is looking for me to fail. They're not looking for me to succeed. They are looking for me to fail so they can make themselves feel better by tearing me down. That's crazy. That's fucking mental. All this individual had to do was ask me, Hey, are you on a break? Because you're wearing headphones. Yeah, I am. Okay, cool. Or, hey, in my mind, I see a, a, a staffer wearing headphones. That means they're on their personal time. Don't bother them. <sighs> Absolutely crazy. I just... It's fucking mental. It's mental. You just don't know what you're going to do. Turn around and aha, I got you. Aha. You could be doing everything right in that place where I work. And aha, I got you. Your laces are untied. Aha, you're missing one button on your shirt. Aha, you have headphones on on your personal time. It's like, oh, God, man. You've really got to take a step back and, and, and evaluate. It's like, 
you know, a, a good boss, a good boss, a good manager or a good whatever the fuck you are, um, has great, not good, not great, it can't be perfect, obviously, but has, possesses the skill and the wherewithal to ask the question, I see an employee wearing headphones, they must be on their break, I'm not sure, let me ask them, there's nothing wrong with asking, there is something wrong with being fucking aggressive after the fact, like, I just want to let you know you were almost in trouble. What? Oh, that's just, it's just crazy, man. Absolutely mental. So, uh, back to the customers of the week. The first customer I had, um, as y'all know, I've been doing curbside orders and uh, whatever works. Just trying to burn up the clock so I can get back to me life. Um. And I'm doing curbside orders. I'm gathering people's groceries and whatnot. And this lady every week complains about the produce I give her. Every week. And this week, she, uh, not like, like clockwork, complained about the produce. Oh, how can I help you? Yes, I don't like the produce you've been giving me. The produce you've been giving me I want to get fresh produce if you please I said ma'am the produce is fresh if you wait too long to come and pick up your things if it sits in the refrigerator too long without being watered like the rest of the produce is it's gonna go bad that's what I found out from the produce manager oh okay so the day before she placed an order so I got it ready for the next day Got all her stuff together. The next day, she cancels her fucking order that took me an hour and 30 minutes to put together. Okay? She cancels her order. Fine. You're allowed to choose your mind. This is, you're allowed to change your mind. This is America. This is America. You're allowed to change your mind. Fine. So... After I had spent an hour and 30 minutes gathering her things, then I spent about another 30 minutes or so putting her items back that she didn't want from her order. By the time I got done placing the last thing back, she called back with the exact same order that she just fucking canceled. You dumb son of a bitch. Oh, I was livid. I was like, oh, you, you fucking motherfucker. Just put all your shit back and then you want it back. Nah, you can't do that. It's not fair. So then she was bitching about the produce again. So I went ahead and I talked to my boss. I said, look, this ain't fair. What are we going to do to make sure this bitch doesn't do this again? So they decided to charge her double the fee for the service because I spent an hour and 30 minutes picking all that shit, and then I had to spend another 30 minutes putting it back. And then now I've got to spend another hour and 30 minutes picking it back up again. It's a waste of fucking time. So I gather up all her stuff, and I ask the produce guy, I said, hey, man, this lady keeps complaining. Show me the technique. Give me the secret to picking the best produce, okay? You know. And he goes, what you like, what I like are two different things. So he picked up uh, uh, some cilantro and showed me. He says, do you like this? And I said, hell yeah. And then he flipped it over in the back. And the back had a bunch of brown leaves. And I said, so fucking chill off the brown leaves off and eat the rest. I'm good. And he said, exactly. But the people that shop here at this place don't want to see any brown nothing. What the customers at my work fail to realize is that nature is not perfect. You're going to have spots, man. That's part of the game. Live with it. Cut around it. The rest of it is still good. The rest of it's still nutritious. To throw away the entire thing is completely fucking retarded. So picked out the best one. Had the produce manager pick out the best looking produce she'd ever fucking seen. And she comes up, she arrives, 
in the parking lot. I bring her stuff to her. And I wanted to explain some things to her because I was upset in a calm manner. I just wanted to correct her irresponsible behavior because the produce man said where I picked the produce the day before and I wrap it in a bag and then I put that inside a bag that goes into a dark fridge. The produce is starting the um, decomposition process. It's starting to break down. So, of course, it's not going to look as good when I pulled it off the shelf versus it's been sitting in the fridge for a whole day or two days. Because some people don't get their shit until like two, three days later. So, I was going to explain that to her. And this bitch wouldn't roll her fucking window down. I was like, ma'am, I need you to roll your window down so I can explain some things to you. She's like, no, I can hear you. I'm like, good thing I can fucking read lips because I can't fucking hear you, bitch. I was like, okay, so if you have a fucking problem with your order, you need to call management. Don't call me. Call management. Okay? The reason why we're having a problem with the produce is because if you take too long to get here, your stuff's going bad. That's just part of the process. It's a living thing. It's a living thing. And then she I'm like... I don't understand what you're saying, so I'm just going to keep talking. So if you got a problem with something, you call a manager. Don't call me. The process is going to go bad because it's sitting in the fridge. Have a nice day. God bless. Boop. She's like trying to still talk to me through the window. And I was like, I can't hear you. So if you could roll your window down. I don't want to put my mask on. And I was like, oh, really, bitch? Really? This is why you're going to be rude? Because you don't want to put a fucking mask on? <laughs> Show off, you fucking cunt. Oh, God. Oh, it's just terrible. The level of entitlement from these people. You're getting a service brought to your fucking car. You don't have to come inside the store. You could at least extend the fucking courtesy and roll your goddamn window down so we can have a conversation like an adult. But no, you want to be a child and leave your window up because you don't want to put your mask on. And she pointed the mask. was like, I don't want to put it on. I'm just like, okay, bye, bitch. I just walked away. I was just like, fuck this. I don't need to put up with your bullshit. You canceled your fucking order and then reordered it again. And then now you're trying to give me shit through your fucking window. And I can barely hear you. So I'm done. So I was just like, you got a problem? Call a manager. And I yelled it. I was just like, if you got a fucking problem, call the manager. Don't call me. I have nothing to do with it. Numbers on the receipt. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. God bless. (laughs) <laughs> fucking motherfucker man god damn it where you get the nerve to be a complete trash human being you don't have the decency to roll down your window and have a conversation like an adult you want to hide behind the fucking phone you want to be a keyboard warrior through the computer leaving me nasty notes like make sure the green onions has short stocks make sure you don't tie my produce bags i reuse them make sure you do this make sure you do this like oh (laughs) fuck off come inside if you're that fucking picky just come inside it's real easy and the second customer um he proceeded to just leave his truck in the middle of the street at my work. It was fascinating. And he had parked in a parking spot. And I guess his truck is so old that it just rolls. And my work is on a hill. So he parked his car or truck in the uh, parking spot. And it just rolled out of the spot and, and crashed into the car corral. And when I notified my boss, she came out to him and said, was like, oh, is this your car? And he's like, yeah. And she goes, oh, well, sir, that's not a parking spot. He's like, it rolled. She's like, okay, well, if you want to move that. And he goes, eh, it rolls. It's like, wait, what? You, oh, God. You knowingly drive a truck that when you park it, it rolls. And you don't feel the sense of urgency to do something about it. Like you could run over some little old lady or a dog. It rolls. That was the only answer he had for my boss. It rolls. I'm like, well, roll it back into the fucking spot. Because that's not a parking spot. That's not safe. What if there's an emergency and the fire department needs to come? You're blocking the fucking street. It rolls. Oh, God. 
fucking di- what we call back in the day, back in the old Ramboper days, uh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> And what we call trashy black people, boobity. <laughs> Shout out to Bubba the Love Sponge for that. Um, <laughs> this fucking dear, dear, dear say it. My truck rolls when I park it. <laughs> it rolled a whole fucking 15 feet out of the parking spot and crashed into the car corral. Like, <laughs> Fucking stupid. And speaking of boobities, <laughs> help this boobity who was scaring other customers with her bloodshot giant fucking Rocco's Modern Life eyes. Like, <laughs> she had these Ed, these bloodshot red Ed Big Head eyes. Ed Big Head! <laughs> And she was like demanding one of my coworkers help her when she was already helping someone else. She interrupted another consult to get help. She was like, Excuse me, excuse me. And my coworker was like, Yeah. She's like, I have a question. I need to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Boopity. <laughs> Oh, damn it. I'm going to ask you a question. And my coworker was like, um, well, I'm in the middle of a consult with somebody else. Um, I can get someone for you, or you can just wait a minute. And like, no, I said I want to ask you a question. <laughs> and I could hear this boopity getting loud. And I was like, oh, fuck. I better go over there before... Before it escalates, and um, so as I'm walking over there, and she was like sticking her face in my coworker's face, like I said, I wanna ask you a question. You gonna help me or not? Nah? And then the person that my coworker was helping was like, Oh, go ahead and help her. She was scared of this lady, and you would be too if you saw fucking Ed big head eyes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then um, she started to walk away. My coworker's like, "Nah, I'm not. I'm with you. Were here first. This lady can wait." And so as I'm walking up, and she goes, "Excuse me, can't I just ask a question? Oh, then nobody want to help me here." And then uh, it's like, "I can help you." And then she's like, "Big <laughs> I was like, "Oh fuck, Ed Big Head." Egg, Ed Big Head Boobity, how can I help you? And as soon as she turned, she had a fucking Michelle Obama mask on and these ginormous Ed Big Head eyes that were bloodshot red. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I'm definitely taking one for the team for this one, but we really, we really weren't busy, so I was just like, well, if those two are busy, then I'm not busy. I'm gonna help you. I need some energy. I said I need some energy. All right. Uh, okay. Well, uh, have you tried uh, vitamin B12? I usually like to recommend vitamin B12 before because there's no toxicity levels. It's extremely safe. You can take as much B12 as you want. Nothing will fucking happen to you. The worst is it will give you energy. That's it. She's like, B12. B12 don't work. B12 don't work. I said, okay, well, uh, how many micrograms are you taking? I'm taking a thousand milligrams. And I was like, oh, oh, you mean a thousand micrograms? Uh, well, whatever, I'm taking it, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And I was just like, fuck, I couldn't even look her in the eyes because I thought it was like contagious. I didn't want to have like, red big head eyes. <laughs> I just didn't want to look her in the eyes. I was like, oh, shit. Jeez. I just kept staring at the Michelle Obama mask. <laughs> so I was like, um, well, we sell up to 10,000 micrograms. Okay. Which is one milligram. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Wait, let me see. Yeah, 5,000 micrograms. 
Wait, yeah, five thousand micrograms is five milligrams. So she wanted, she had a thousand micrograms, or she kept saying she had a thousand milligrams. So that meant that she had a hundred thousand micrograms of B12. <laughs> Oh, I'm bitch, you are fucked up. No wonder your eyes are exploding out of your head. <laughs> I was like, no, so um, this is kind of how it works. So uh, this one is 5,000 micrograms or 5 milligrams. If you have 1,000 micrograms, then that means it's 1 milligram, not 1,000. So uh, she was like, well, show me that stuff, baby. I need energy. I was like, oh, fuck. All right. So I take her over there, and I was like, why don't you try 5,000 micrograms? That's five times the strength of what you have. And I can only imagine, as I'm telling her, I can only imagine her taking 5,000 micrograms in the morning, and then she's like, like fucking Mario, like, when he gets the fucking, when he gets the shit. <laughs> when fucking Mario gets the fucking invisible star. <laughs> and then, of course, his giant eyes. <laughs> <It'd be good. laughs> Holy shit. I was just like, why don't you try this? This is five times the strength of what you had before. And like I said, there's no toxicity. There is no medical thing. You can Google this shit. I won't lie to you guys. I'm telling you, I'm not a doctor, but I know this. You can Google. There has been zero cases in medical history of anybody overdosing on vitamin B12. Okay. And she goes, I don't know, baby, because I went to the doctor and he told me I had too much B12 in my system. I was like, <laughs> I just start fucking laughing. I was like, how sway? How sway? Take a few steps back. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. Bitch, you piss it out. Whatever you don't fucking use, your body will piss it out. I was just like, "Mm." I'm not a doctor, man, but my understanding of how B12 works in the body is if your body will take what it needs and will release the rest. So you don't store B12. That's why you can take it all the time. She's like, I don't know, baby. I'm going to try this. But I don't know. I was just like, okay, bitch. All right. Bye. <laughs> Get out of here. It began. <laughs> oh, my God. What the fuck, man? It's crazy. Crazy ass place I work at. And as that lady was walking by, the lady that was in the consult with my coworker, she saw her and she fucking got scared. I <laughs> like took a step back with her basket. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Who can I ask a question? Who gonna help me here? Why do you guys, why do black people, not all, why do some black people have to act like complete boopities? It's like, can you just be polite and calm and wait your fucking turn? Like, why do you have to interrupt somebody else's consult? And then be rude to both people and then be nasty about it. Just rude and nasty. Like, almost threatening. Like, I gotta ask a question or else. Somebody better help me or else. Boopity. <laughs> uh, some current events. Some current events. This week, it, hot off the topic. The hot topic is Jacob Blake and the Kenosha riots. I am, well, y'all know how I feel as far as with the George Floyd thing. And uh, apparently Mr. Blake was a violent offender, uh, some sort of sexual chart, uh, sexual assault, allegedly um, assault um, with a deadly weapon, if I'm not mistaken. And regardless of this rap sheet, Nobody, and I do mean this with peace and love, peace and love. Nobody deserves to be shot in the back seven fucking times. Okay. Now, I've watched this video one time. I don't want to watch it again. My understanding of this is that 
he was tased and the taser did not work. He got up and then proceeded to walk to the driver's side of the door because the kids were in the car. I don't know what he was reaching for in the car. The cops don't know, which is why they pull out their guns and start fucking shooting. You know better. Jacob Blake, as many run-ins you've had with the fucking law, you know better. You know you can't go back to your car and reach for something in the car. They're going to fucking shoot you. Whether you are right or wrong, you have to follow the protocol. And if they tase you, stay down. It didn't work. So what? Stay the fuck down. You don't want anything to happen. Now your kids got to live with the grief of you being shot in front of them. Mr. Blake is paralyzed, as my, if my understanding is correct. I just... Where did we go wrong here? As police officers, I'm not a cop, but I feel like as an observer, when you tase somebody and they get right up, then you need to immediately go into some sort of jujitsu mode and tackle this guy from the back, not put a knee on his neck, tackle him, take out the leg, sweep the leg, grab the arm. One cop grabs one arm, one cop, and one cop grabs the other. Somebody grabs his legs and take this fool down. Take him down to the ground. Cuff him then. Why are you letting him get up and walk to the other side of the car? Did you need the excuse to shoot him seven fucking times in the back? I don't understand. I really don't understand. And and maybe not for his household, but I've heard from several households. I know in my household, I was taught what to do when you do get pulled over by the cops. Whether you're right or wrong, listen to what their instructions are. Because I don't want to die. My parents wanted to make sure I made it home at night. Do what they say, even if it's wrong. If it's wrong, we'll sue them or we'll go to court about it, okay? But it's not worth you using, losing your fucking life or being injured. <sighs> it's extremely frustrating. I just feel like, once again, here is another situation that cops need to be taught. Proper de-escalation tactics. Not defunding. De-escalation. Um, I feel like also Mr. Blake should have been more responsible to stay down anyway if the taser didn't work. Stay down. Just let the cops cuff you. Whatever they did wrong, we'll figure it out later. They got a body cam on. Okay? Somebody in the house is filming it. So, he's very lucky he is not dead. He is definitely paralyzed, but he is very lucky he's not dead. And um, this whole thing, once again, comes down to the treatment of African Americans by police, and um, I just don't see this getting any better until they start to reform these police officers with proper de escalation tactics. Um, and also, if you are an African American listening to my show and you have a family, which you should, if you don't, then let me tell you if you do get pulled over by a fucking cop, do what they say. But also know your rights. Okay? Um, this week, we got the notice. Some of us who are in the Ellis fam, Wolf Knives, got the, uh, you know, Instagram does the memories thing. Or maybe your phone does. I know Google Photos does the memories, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, Facebook. And this week, they uh, went back to August 2018 Ellis Mania 15. I posted it on my page, but I just I posted the <clears throat> I posted my uh, fight with Sam, and I talked about how, and I've talked about it on here. I talked about how I encouraged her to fulfill a dream that her father wanted to instill in her, and that was boxing picking up boxing and her father was starting to teach her before he passed away. And this week it uh, brought up the memory that um, she and I were in the ring and we fought and, and how proud I was of her that she 
decided to take up the challenge and get in there. And I'm proud of anybody who takes up the challenge to get in the ring at any level, whether it's pro or beginning. The biggest thing for me, for Sam, was that she honor her father's wishes and get this done. Because at that time, I said, you know, life is extremely precious and you just never know. And flash forward to now, and Sam is passed on. I'm so glad that she listened to me and I kept pushing her to do it. I didn't want to fight her, of course, but I'm so glad that she did listen to it and take me up on that offer and 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 push forward and get it done because uh, I would have hate for her to go on to the other side without her getting that off her list. And um, I just want to say that I'm really proud of Sam for doing that and I'm really proud of Sam and uh, her accomplishments, her achievements, and her willingness to help others, starting with kids, which is the future, of course, teaching, and most importantly, that um, she took the initiative and faced her fears and got into the ring and took a fight and did very well, considering she was uh, with me in the ring. And I just want to let her know, because I believe that she's listening wherever she is at, hopefully upstairs, up in the heavens, Sammy, Sammy sweetheart, I love you, Sam, and I miss you every day, and I miss Steph, I see her every day on inside my phone, and um, once again, it is not easy losing a friend. But um, we keep the memory of, of them with us in our hearts. So congratulations to Sam. Also, a big congratulations to uh, Rice Bar at Rice Bar. He got in the, the ring with his MC Hammer pants and he fought Jim Jim 5000, a.k.a. Jay, I be chubby. I was very proud of those guys for getting in the ring. And of course, Sock Suck It, Genevieve. She also got in the ring. I might have hit her a little too hard in practice on accident, merely an accident, I promise. Uh, she got in the musical chairs uh, fight, and I was very proud of her for doing that. And of course, Miss Etika, who I watched her fight the fairy, she did a fantabulous job, considering that was her first fight. Um, I'm very proud of everybody. For getting in there, it's not easy to get in the ring, and then let alone get punched in the face. You always have a game plan until you get punched in the motherfucking face. And I encourage anybody who has not done done so to do it. Take a fight. See what you're fucking made of. Uh, this week also marked 19 years since we lost Aaliyah. 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 Wake up Creeping through the fog Who that y'all hey, 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 hey. Um man I told y'all before I had a discussion Maybe I did maybe I didn't I had a discussion with a co-worker And we were talking about Romeo must die And he was like oh yeah that black chick she's really cool She can kind of sing too And I was like what do you mean fucking kind of sing Whoa 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 bro whoa wait what He's like, yeah, hey, Romeo must die. I was like, uh, it's fucking Aaliyah, you know, Queen of the Damned. Uh, was supposed to be in the Matrix, but she passed away. Uh, Romeo must die. It's Aaliyah, one of the greatest R&B singers of, our, of all time. He goes, uh, I don't know any of your songs. I was like, what the fuck? Then I quickly realized I'm talking to somebody under the age of 25. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Holy shit. You, can we understand, can we comprehend, folks, that we are now living in an age where people under the age of 25 do not know who the fuck Aaliyah is. That 
is fucking alarming. First you don't say see, but yourself off and try again. But yourself off and try again. Try again. What about this one? I want you to ride the boat, ride the boat, man the man, man the man, change position, change position, change position, stroke it, stroke it, stroke it, stroke it, stroke it for me, stroke it for me. How do you not know these fucking songs, man? What the hell? This is disturbing. A disturbing generation is approaching, and I'm encouraging you to. We need a revolution. We need a revolution. Let me let me know. Let me know. I will. Let me know. Girl, holla. You keep on being impatient. You trying to blame me, but I don't even know the reason. We need a revolution, goddammit. We, we need a revolution. And you need, if you have children under the age of 25, you have friends who are under the age of 25, I believe it's important that you play Aaliyah immediately (laughs) this is just like what the fuck I can't comprehend it it's like they're missing out on good music you need to hear Aaliyah you must hear Aaliyah believe me let me see you come back let me see you come back let me see your back and forth now, Jiggy. Let me see your back and forth now, Jiggy. It's Friday. Hey, let me let you hang. Get up, nigga. Nobody sing. Hey. Hey. Oh, God. Spotify only has one fucking song on there. It's, or the her first album with, of course, that nasty R. Kelly, who got his ass being jailed this week. Praise the Lord, uh, well deserved, little weirdo. Um, Spotify only has the fucking first album. It does not have one in a million or the other Aaliyah album. Hello, what the fuck you waiting for, Spotify? Go get this shit, fam. Here's a one and a million. You gotta have this in the database. How else will the kids know who the fuck a lid is? We need a Leah, okay? The people, the children, this is the kids need to know about Aaliyah. This is very important. I need you to do this for me this week. Play the fuck out of Aaliyah. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, this week, Usain Bolt, none other than me brethren from Jamaica, he threw a birthday bash for himself. Me man threw a birthday bash for himself with the hot girl fire, and he caught the coronavirus. Listen, you jackass, you threw yourself a giant birthday party with all your friends, no mask, no social distancing, ass in the face, Jamaican daggering, and you got the Rona. Shame. 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 Usain, you couldn't have like five people at your house spread six feet apart out? Shame on me. I'm, I'm not shocked that you caught the Rona fam. Speedy recovery, but beware next time. Better wear your goddamn mask. Woman was declared dead and was about to be embalmed. Starts breathing again at a funeral home. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) Can you fucking imagine you're like declared dead and then you're trying to tell the doctor like, "Mm -mm, no, I'm still alive. Hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm still here. Hey. And then, only to be whisked off into a fucking corner van with other dead bodies, and you're still alive. Then, they put you in the freezer. 
<laughs> and then right when they're about to fucking drain you of your bodily fluids, you're like, all right, motherfucker, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck man I, that would scare the bejesus out of me i'm be like yep yeah, i'm just in a room with dead bodies like sphinx i leave my sandwich on top of a dead person while i'm draining them of their bodily fluids and they're like hey can i have a bite like what fuck out of here fam <laughs> oh god thank goodness I don't know what this woman did, but she got the attention of the embalmer. I mean, obviously, couldn't drain her of her fluids because she was still alive. <laughs> Please don't drain me. <laughs> oh, God. Thank God. Thank God this lady had the strength to get some attention to herself. I want to tell y'all about a new band alert, Straw Hats. Let me get some Straw Hats going on for you. New band alert, Straw Hats. I'm going to play their song. This song is called Koto. And let me tell you what you think this song is going to be. They pull the old switcheroo on you. Here we go. Straw Hats. Oh, shit. This is like... I was like, all right, I'm down for some meditation. <laughs> but there's a surprise in the song, you see? Let me find that surprise for you. Here's a surprise. Wait. Here it comes. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Here comes a surprise. Boots, 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 boots. Download them right now. Yeah, that's right. I surprised you, huh? Threw a little curveball in your 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 thing. Your 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 dick's curved, and I threw a curve ball. <laughs> now I'm gonna end the show with something positive. This week, I I presented two things this week. I gave y'all some uh, homework, of course. You uh, should have written down where you are right now, where you want to be in the future, and what is stopping you. Then I also threw up a little thing yesterday as well. Where'd it go? Thursday, I posted on the Instagram uh, a little uh, thing that you could do daily, a little daily exercise. It is, of course, about negative thoughts and what you can do with them. So here we go. So here's an exercise that you can try from Christine Hassler, my favorite coach ever. Forget about everyone else. Go look in the mirror and think about what makes you special, unique, or what you do really well. We all have gifts, talents, and qualities. So maybe you just need to remind yourself of yours. Maybe it's your compassion or your intelligence, or your ability to solve problems. Whatever it is, say it out loud as an I am statement. Like, for example, I am compassionate. I am smart. It's such a quick and simple exercise to start out your day with positivity and will automatically and immediately help grow your confidence and move you towards a life that you love. Next time you feel that voice inside your head say that you can't or you shouldn't, push it aside and take action anyway. So cool, and I thought that that would help somebody. And of course, as I talk about it here on the show, I always hope that it will help someone uh, going through something. And of course, as you know, me doing this show, I am constantly going through things. <laughs> and uh, this week... 
I was listening to a new episode from Christine Hassler podcast, episode 259. And she talked about a lady. She had a coaching session with a lady who wants to start her own coaching business. Hello, me, yours truly. Um, It was not me who called, of course, but it was a lady with a similar situation, except she had really bad acne and was embarrassed or ashamed of this and was afraid to go out into the coaching world because of her appearance. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is me. Because I um, am in the coaching world, but I would like to be on my own in the coaching world and um, having clients outside of the job that I have now. How could I do this when I can't, my, my ideal is that, my belief is that I can't get clients because I look the way that I look. If I want to do physical fitness, I can't get clients because I don't look physically fit. The important thing is she's right in one aspect as far as it's important for us to take care of our health. And so I need to do a better job of doing that. But also, I can't wait for me to be perfect in order to teach other people. So I thought that was really fascinated and resonated with me this week. Something that resonated within me this week from this call was the fact that she talked about outsourcing our self-worth. They went into how uh, she's been single for a long time, this caller, and so so am I, and many of you listening, so are you. If we outsource our self-worth, that we will not get back what we truly deserve. And, and, and to go into detail of that is if you think that you're not good enough, then you are going to attract someone who thinks you are not good enough, unfortunately. This happens when we give away our power and that power needs to stay with us. Initially, when I thought about this and I reflected in my current situation and, and why things aren't working out and what the hell's going on and where the Fuck is my soul made? Where is she? God damn it. And you're probably doing the same thing. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you've already found them. Congratulations. I thought about, man, why, why won't this work? Why did my relationship fail? Why did this not work? And immediately, aha, it was because I outsourced my self-worth. At the time of that relationship, I didn't think very good things about myself, and that is what I got. And so the treatment that I received is I thought that is what I deserved, when that is not true. Outsourcing self-worth and validation will draw in people that don't match the situation. Matter of fact, it will make it worse. Drawing in people in within a deficit will bring more deficit. And we attract where we are. So with that being said, if I want to attract a hottie with the body, I must believe I am a hottie with the body. <laughs> and that goes for you listening. If you would like to attract someone, someone of self-worth, and substantialness, some substance, then you need to think that about yourself as well. Um, So I'm going to play that call for you when I am done here. And remember, we attract where we are. So it's very important that we think good things about ourselves, and that will attract people who think good things about us. Please like, share, and subscribe to Ramble Parado, rambleparado.com. Tell a friend, but only if they're cool. True sayers and lie slayers. This is Ramble Parado. You are and I am awesome. So you think you have to be totally healed before you can start coaching other people? Well, no. There's a part of you that believes that. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... What if it wasn't totally about that? I get that that's a big part of it. But what else do you think when you really stop and you tune in? You're a coach. So that means that you have a beautiful tools of awareness and you have a strong intuition. When you close your eyes and you check in, what do you think is really stopping you? I think being judged sometimes. Mm-hmm. What happens if you're judged? People might not want to work with me. Hmm. And what would they judge you for? Maybe not knowing enough or not. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, 
<laughs> well, it's important that we unpack a lot of our beliefs because when we actually start to unpack a lot of our beliefs, we realize they don't have much merit. Mm -hmm. There are these things that we choose to buy into that are usually from old stuff. And when we unpack them, it's kind of like, well, I don't know that that's really true. And anybody that judges me, I don't know that I'd want to work with them anyway. Like if someone judged you and, and let's just use the acne example and saw you and, and looked at all the things that maybe you put out on your blog or Instagram, read about your health story and then said, oh, she has a few pimples. I'm not going to work with her. Would you want to work with that person? Does mm -hmm. that person feel like the ideal client for you? No. Not at all. Right. So sometimes whenever we're quote unquote putting ourselves out there, we are giving other people way too much power. And we do this in a lot of ways in our life. And we don't think clearly about how, even though we're being of service and the same could apply to dating or applying for a job. We put ourselves in the pick me, pick me, choose me, less empowering role versus mm -hmm. really putting ourselves in a role of, I have gifts to share. I have a purpose to live into. I have information to spread. And I'm looking for my ideal client. I'm looking for the people who will be a good fit, who we can really do deep work together. Do you see how you're giving your power away to potential clients that you probably don't even want? Mm -hmm. So let, yeah. let's look at that a little bit. Where else have you outsourced your self-worth? Like in your life, where has it been a pattern to give people more power over you than you should? Um, I think in my dating life also. How so? I've been single for a while now, for probably like almost five years. But my last relationship, I felt like, he didn't treat me the way that I should have been treated, but I still was too blind to see that. And I was still trying and trying and I gave away a lot of my power. Yeah. Yeah. I gave away a lot of my power because. Because I thought that's all I deserved mm. back then. Mm. And why do you think that you thought that was all you deserved? I don't think I really loved myself or was taking care of myself mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. And you also were looking to someone else to fulfill you. And when we outsource our self-worth or our self-love or our self-validation, we usually pick people that really can't do it. Because if we have low self-worth, aren't validating ourselves, aren't really seeing ourselves, then it's impossible to draw someone in, be it a client or business opportunity or a friend or a romantic relationship that can do that for us because there's not an energetic match. So wherever we have deficit, we attract more deficit. We sort of attract where we are. So that makes perfect sense. So this is so important, Melissa, and I'm so glad we're talking about this, that you start to shift this because if you're going into building a coaching practice with a less than people aren't going to think that I'm completely credible because I'm not totally healed, then one, you're probably not going to attract a ton of clients because vibrationally you don't think you're good enough, but also any clients that you will attract, they probably won't have a lot of success no matter how hard you work because they're going to mirror your belief that they're not enough. A health coaching practice or not really can relate to feeling a lifetime of shame about something. Physical stuff is such a, oh, it can be such a shame builder, whether it's acne or being a certain size or the list goes on and on. I don't, I haven't really encountered hardly anyone who doesn't have some kind of body or physical shame. And it's a big one and it can put on a lot of masks. It can cause us to wear a lot of masks and it can rob us of so much joy and so much self-expression. And also usually the thing that we're most self-conscious about, people really don't notice, not as much as we do anyway. And if they do notice, they often don't evaluate us because of it. You know, I've never formed an opinion on someone because of their physical 
characteristics. And honestly, if someone does form an opinion about you because of something completely superficial, then do you really want that person in your life anyway? And that brings me into one of the first things I wanted to reiterate about what I was talking to Melissa about, which is, and I've said this before many times, we give our power away too much. We seek the approval of people that we actually wouldn't even want as clients, as friends, as boyfriends or girlfriends. I mean, seriously, but using Melissa as as an example, does she really want a client who judges her because maybe her skin isn't completely clear? Does she really want a boyfriend who judges her because of X, Y, Z? No, no. So I ask all of you this, why are you fighting for approval from people who you don't even like? (laughs) I mean, seriously, you can't please everyone. I have learned that so many times over. You know, even you listening, I know that I don't please every single one of you in every single episode. And that has to be okay with me. And just because someone doesn't please you all the time doesn't mean you have to completely write them off either. We all can be way, way, way too judgmental of other people, mostly because we're judgmental of ourselves. And I have learned that as I've become way less self-critical of myself and way less judgmental of myself, I've become incredibly more compassionate to other people and way less judgmental of others. I'm just able to see they're in their stuff. And for any of you who want to put yourself out there in whatever way that you feel called to do it, please do. You are needed. We need more people of consciousness, of light, of love, being loud in the world. Too many people have loud voices that honestly shouldn't have a microphone. So get your voice out there. Get your voice out there and stop letting shame and fear of rejection and fear of judgment and that pick me, choose me, I want everybody to like me pattern get in your way because not everyone's going to like you and that has to be okay. But the people who do resonate with you, you're depriving them and yourself of the connection and of the service that can happen and of the magic that can happen because you're way too focused on avoiding the people that may not like you or may reject you. Stop falling into that avoidance trap. Stop wasting your energy avoiding what you don't want and really go for what you do. The other thing I wanted to highlight is confidence. And I said this to Melissa, confidence isn't this feeling of, I totally got it. I have no doubts about myself. I know I'm going to nail everything that I do. No, that's not confidence. Confidence is one radical self-acceptance. I accept myself fully as I am. I, I like myself. I accept myself. Yes. Am I evolving? Am I learning and growing? Are there always things that I want to get better at? Sure. But that doesn't have to make me not confident. Confidence shouldn't be based on a someday kind of thing. It's the first thing. The other thing about confidence is it comes from doing. You can't feel confident about something until you do it for a while. So with Melissa, I just encourage her, get out there, do it. Keep coaching people. She mentioned that she has friends and people in her inner circle that she's helped. Good, keep doing that. Write Instagram posts, do the videos. The more you do, the more confident you will feel. But if you sit around and wait to feel totally confident and totally courageous or wait until you think you can get the approval of everyone or wait until you have this perfect fill in the blank, then you're never going to feel confident because you're not taking any action. And that was the other thing I just encouraged Melissa to do, action, baby step after baby step, little things every day that she can do that gets her into that frequency and that vibration of being a coach. Because the more that she lives in that, the more it'll start to feel real to her, the more it will start to feel like her. And then a lot of these fears about not being enough and blah, 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 they'll start to go away because it will just start to feel like an expression of her highest truth. And finally, and this is for all of you, turn your shame, whatever you have been shamed about, into compassion and service. Use it to feel the utmost compassion for people who are struggling, people who are dealing with shame and serve. You know, you are uniquely equipped to serve people who feel shame in the ways that you do. You know, one of the things that I felt so much shame about was depression and anxiety. 
and feeling not enough and feeling like I wasn't living into my expectations. And that makes me uniquely qualified to help people that experience shame about that. So your shame can transmute and transform into service, bring it into the light and serve. As I said a couple weeks ago, it's time for you to step up, to step up into the light, into the love, to use your voice, to not let your fear and judgment And a small group of people who may not like exactly what you have to say or may judge you or may reject you or whatever, stop giving them so much power. I have seen over and over and over again, when we really step into our gifts and shine our light, the universe always supports us. We are always watched over, protected. We got to own it. We got to, you know, meet Spirit, meet the universe at the point of action and intention. We can't just expect the universe to come in and work miracles for us if we aren't stepping up as well. So you got this. You belong. You have a voice to share, whether it's with your family, your kids, your friends, or a bigger platform. Start living into the highest truth and expression of you. No more shaming yourself into not enoughness or not readiness. You got this.